Let's do some news! My name is Mike B, aka Phony. Today's date is June 23rd. 2020. Uh, it is a Tuesday. <laughs> it is a Tuesday at 3.33 p.m. We have to note the time, Pacific, by the way. We have to note the time because stuff's happening so quickly that uh, by the end of this episode, we'll have a whole other news show lined up for you guys. So maybe we'll just do them back to back. I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> uh, but yes, uh, lots has happened over the weekend. I took I took a couple days off. Um, I, not really like, officially or anything. I just took Friday off because we had people coming over. Uh, and, you know, we just kind of spent the day just drinking and hanging out something nobody ever does anymore because we can't uh and then the next day hung over kind of really do anything towards the end of the day i start tuning in and i'm like what is going on there's so much stuff that happened so much in a matter of days like just a matter of a couple days shit has hit the fan exactly Shit has hit the fan. It is Tuesday, right? She says time no longer exists in 2020, but I'm, I'm certain it's Tuesday. Yes. Uh, so. <laughs> oh, okay. So first off, I feel obligated to tell you that there, there are some, um, I've never had to do this before. Trigger warning uh, for everything from sexual harassment to rape. Basically everything. Okay. So be warned. I'm serious. I'm, I'm actually being serious. Okay. Because we're going to be talking a lot about this because this is exactly what we're covering today for a good chunk of the news. Got it? Good. Okay. So. Well, let's just open up the article and take a look at it. All right. So. There was a whole bunch of... Uh, me too style of um statements that were made over the weekend starting i think thursday uh it started up started up with uh say no to rage which is one letter away from something else say no to rage uh he had a uh an allegation against him from a uh from he's a known destiny streamer by the way uh and the allegations came from uh someone named mind of snaps where they'd gone through and just kind of detailed some occurrences that that happened between them two and uh, that uh, was later commented on by Say No to Rage. But it, this this one event, we're not going to focus too much on individual events because there are so many. Because there are so many. I, I, I try to dig and start to go through and look at the details of some things. I try to get the gist of some of these things. But there is so much. This is just one. Okay? <laughs> this is just one of many now if you know if you know if, obviously if you know women in the industry you know that they have stories for days stories for days about the kind of stuff that they have to deal with when it comes to uh you know their encounters with others in the games industry related to sexual harassment to i mean uh toxic uh, toxicity in the workplace stuff like that and so we're going to try to cover as many as we can not necessarily in detail but just to go over so you guys get a good overview of what happened and how this turned into this basically me too too essentially electric boogaloo popped in there too but i think the boogaloo, boogaloo thing's kind of off the table now right okay uh so <clears throat> start off with these allegations against um say no to rage and i gotta change that actually hold on a second I'm say no to rage with a g uh and it spiraled up to we actually have a me four <laughs> came here, me too uh <laughs> and some more allegations came out this one's against omid and the list just goes on and on. As a matter of fact, let me show you the original. Let me just go through here real quick. These, this is a compilation. Now, this is a new list that was just recently made. Previously, it was a Twitter list uh, with basically a bunch of replies, but that became pretty, uh, it was a lot. It was a lot of stories. So she ended up consolidating down to this, um, I believe, Survivors of Harassment and Assault, which is a huge list of, uh, of just different accounts from all over the place. And again, this goes on forever. It doesn't, it can't even load fast enough. I mean, it's just... It's just absurd how much. And this happened before with, with uh, when Me Too first started getting some uh, some traction. And then what it ended up happening is, you know, women who have experienced this level of sexual harassment or anything uh, like that saw that this was an opportunity for them to speak their mind. Even uh, my close friend, Lindsay, uh, who a lot of you guys know. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. And so, I mean, I'm still scrolling. I mean, I don't, I don't know what you guys mean. It's still, it's, it, just, it just doesn't stop. There might be people in here who you guys know. As a matter of fact, I have a list of a couple people that you guys do know. I'm certain, especially if you guys have followed me for a while, you probably know who some of these people are. But I should, 
I should, before we go too much further, I should remind you that these are allegations, okay? They're, ag- they're accusations, they're allegations, they're stories that are told. A lot of them have already posted their own. Uh, a lot of the people who were, um, uh, who these allegations were against have already posted their own statements. So I encourage you, before you pick up the ball and start running with it, that you check the thread and make sure that, you know, or, or at least go through and read everything before you make comments, okay? Okay? And what I'll do is, because oh, we're doing this live, I'm going to go and throw this into uh, into uh, chat so you guys can see it. And so that way you guys can go through and read it yourself while we go through this. And so one of the uh, one of the bigger names that was, well, I don't know, it's because the scale of bigger names kind of changes when you talk about people who are working in the industry and people who are streamers and whatnot. Uh, more air, please. Um, but one of the bigger names that was, uh, that was called out was uh, Omid. Uh, Omid Dariani. <laughs> I practiced that before too. Uh, Dariani. Check your facts before jumping on the bandwagon. There you go. Pro Jared, Pro Jared was a shitbag. Anyway, that was a really weird situation, wasn't it, Pro Jared? Because he had such a huge penis, and it was just like, it almost is kind of like, just like everything went away, but everybody knows what Pro Jared's penis looks like now. So weird. Uh, I don't even remember the story anymore, but I remember his penis. Fuck. So, uh, yes, this person details his experience, or their experience with uh, Omid Dariani. Uh, you see his face and you're glad you're missing out. <laughs> but such a weird... So, uh, so in this article, uh, or in this particular write-up, she goes on and details some ex- poor experiences she had dating back to PAX Prime 2014. Uh, and a lot of these stories, a lot of these stories seem to take place uh, <clears throat> roughly around that time. I, I, a lot of them actually take place roughly, roughly around that time. And a lot of it sounds like, to me, um, that this was around the time when Twitch started to get really popular. Um, Twitch started to take off. Uh, and with Twitch taking off, you know, Twitch is very accepting of, it, it was kind of a new, it was a new platform that was accepting of basically everybody. And this gave uh, women and, and and uh, persons of color an opportunity to go and, and jump on something that wasn't already established as a male-dominated uh, platform like YouTube was. YouTube was that was pretty much a, a male-dominated platform. Uh, there was jokes about, you know, crazy white man face or whatever it was that was on every thumbnail, uh, stuff like that. And so it was just, it was a known thing. And so it was a new platform that was, uh, that was taken off. It was trendy and it, everybody was jumping all over it. And so what happens is around that time, you get a bunch of young folks together. You have a bunch of old industry folks who, you know, are probably probably you know bred from the uh sexual harassment the workplace is okay kind of uh, kind of cloth right which I, which which is a thing you know I mean, this, these stories happen enough that you know like the the old guard typically bring with them some of these old style of thinking where they could just like harass people just because they can uh and then they bearded men everywhere it's exactly what it was uh mad men era people I would say, yeah, Mad Men era people in the in the scope of video games, absolutely. Uh, and so, you know, you have all these young, you know, young women, eighteen to twenty something or whatever, uh, and they're they're going to these conventions. Um, uh, well, if they're hopefully if they're over the age of of, of twenty one, they're drinking, <laughs> uh, and you know, stuff happens. Uh, where people like Omid take advantage of uh, some of these young folks. Omid runs a uh, runs a company called o, mm, OPG, OP Group, which is a talent, basically a talent managing company. And they actually, they manage a ton of people. Uh, and he responded to this, these allegations. And I won't go into detail about all of them because there's, again, there's so many and we still have to get through these things. Uh, but Omid responded to these allegations saying, no, OPP, that's the first thing that popped in my mind, by the way. Uh, and he says he's no longer a part, he's no, he's no longer the CEO of OPG. OPG is a special company, has a great opportunity where none existed before. The talented women and men who work there pour their hearts into it daily. Give them a chance. Please don't destroy it because you're angry at me. But it's pretty much already destroyed uh, because everybody bailed. Everybody bailed. Co Carnage is gone. He says, I stand up for equality, fairness, and doing the right thing. I've made my career trying to propagate good vibes in a gaming environment, and it's now it's time. It's time for me to practice what I preach. My contact email has been updated in my bio. I really like Coke Carnage. I should watch some of his streams. He seems like a good all-around guy. Every time I come up with a Coke Carnage, Coke Carnage is related to some story, he's always on the right side, I feel like. I like him. Um, as a Dodger even says, I put in my 30 days notice I will be leaving OPG. We can't in good conscience preach a place of safety to our viewers and then not back it up with our actions. To all the people at OPG who have been really wonderful to us, thank you. To the people who spoke up today, thank you. Uh, Kiboga. You guys know Kiboga. Uh, Kiboga, speaking of truth is perhaps one of the most valuable things we can offer. Thank you for having the courage to share your experiences. In response, I will no longer be represented by OP Group. And, of course, Tal the Tank. Hopefully you guys are familiar with Tally. 
Uh, so I'll be stepping down as a client of OPG. I will be honoring any contracts till they are done out of respect for those companies. I have had plenty, a pretty sleepless night to think it all over. And this is the best, uh, what is best for my family, community, and the future of Tally Gaming. So yeah, lot, don't jinx them, Mike. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> uh, so lots of people I've already basically just walked away from the group uh, before he even made the uh, the post basically going over saying that he is no longer the CEO. Uh, and let me just say, let me just say something, because it is one of those things that is uh, it, it's, it's, it's one of those tropes where it's like the people who are the most vocal when it comes to. Uh, uh, or, or the most preachy, I guess, are typically the ones that are projecting the most. Uh, Omid was somebody that I had muted a long time ago because I was sick and tired of just the diatribes of shit that I just, I just could not get over. It was just so much, so much preaching. Uh, and here's one just from a few days ago. Gandhi said, even if you are a minority of one, the truth is the truth. Speaking the truth doesn't always create justice, but you will learn where people stand. Many will stand with you. A few will stand against. Many will remain silent. And then you know who's who. It's fucking, it's fucking horoscopes, man. Uh, so yeah, m muted this guy a long ass time ago because I was tired of people retweeting this kind of garbage. And turns out, turns out, aged perfectly. Days, days. Seriously, it's like the next day, the next day. So he's uh, leaving as CEO. But frankly, I think the group is done. I don't, I don't think there's any. I mean, everybody's leaving. I mean, the list. I gave you a list of a handful. Uh, actually, live stream failed. <laughs> live stream failed. It's a great journalistic effort here by going through and compiling all these notes. Uh, but they they have a massive list list of people that are leaving. I mean, Cobalt Stay, Gassy Mexican, Diction Strippin, Curvy Llama, Bikeman, Elohim, Pensa, Death Ridge, Faux Freedom, Ava, Dan Giesling, Burke Black, Classy Packs, Tiger Riders, Sun and Century. Holla, la, 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 la. I mean, like, nobody's going to be left of this company. So that thing is gone. Just gone. Um, so, I mean, there's allegations. It's like, I mean, they keep going. Pro Syndicate has allegations called out by several women. Angry Joe called out. Now, again, Angry Joe resp responded to, uh, actually, I'll show you guys his tweet here. Uh, he responded uh, to this, obviously, de denying everything. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me see. Let me see. Oh my God! Can he find it? This damn list is so big. See, Joe, angry Joe. There it is. So Joe is going to talk to a lawyer, uh, and he says, "2 a.m. in the morning on Twitter, when someone is straight lying about you uh, and trying to get as much attention as they can, is that really the right move? Couldn't anyone just make up anything about me from this that point on? I think I need to speak with a lawyer. This is crazy." And I'll tell you, oh, that tweet no longer exists. I wish I had a screenshot of that, but it's gone. Um, I think it's just a random person responding to Joe. But this this is all, yeah, the list keeps growing. So it's basically tagging everybody that's involved. And this was as of that point. Um, saying that, yeah, Joe, Joe used his status to coerce women into sex or slash sexual acts. Obviously, Joe denies it. Uh, Swifty. So was, uh, I guess Swifty had some instances that happened some years ago. I believe that we we actually heard about this. And we even talked about this um, a long time ago. Uh, and, and and listen, listen, I know AJ being a piece of shit wouldn't surprise me. And, and that's what I'm saying. Like, there have been some instances already with this where some of the... And I wish... Actually, I wish I would have grabbed the actual link, but where the person who was accused came back with receipts and pretty much shut it down, you know? And I've seen everything in this list. I've seen everything from uh, sending unsolicited links to pornography to actual rape. And like, that is, that is a huge, that is a huge, <laughs> sorry, I can't really scoot my, but, but just imagine this guy had the whole screen to work with. That's a, that's a big that's a big window. That's a big window, uh, and all of those things amount to the people making this list, which is a pretty big spectrum to put a bunch of people on. Uh, I almost feel like you should separate them from like from the uh, I guess what would you say harassment and like physical harassment. I guess you could say or physical abuse, physical har or yeah, so harassment to abuse. We should separate them somehow. I don't know. I just feel like there's a severity there where somebody sends you a link to a porn or something like that as a joke. Yeah, that's fucking, that's weird. Don't do that. Don't do that. But you shouldn't be in the same bucket as somebody who committed actual fucking rape. You like, they should be fucking separated. Um... <laughs> Shout out to you, fired at MEJP. Yeah, and JP put out a statement as well, a pretty lengthy statement uh, talking about uh, talking about that as well. So again, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you guys go and uh, and read both. Don't I understand that allegations were set, but there's also a lot of follow up as well. Please, please read the follow up. We can't cover all of them today because there is so 
damn many. Uh, he said it really bums me out. The Swifty thing really bummed me out. The uh, I thought he was a wholesome streamer. The Swifty thing happened. Uh, I remember this actually came up once before. I can't remember her name, but they were staying together. And uh, this, I mean, I'm like a content. I'm like a comment on Swifty's character because I don't know him well enough or anything. Uh, and I, just, I mean, I don't know him. I don't know him because I watch his videos either. Uh, but you know, again, I, from what I read, well, what I read was not Sunday. Really, she almost trapped herself in a box. You're so dumb. Um, but what I read is, is again, like this falls somewhere not towards actual rape kind of thing. So please, yes, do your own research. Yes, Sunday here in the box. She wants the box. <laughs> if it fits, I sits forever. Yes, she's. She, I actually worry because she did it once where she knocked that thing over. She knocked a box over on top of her and she was stuck. It's like dumb cat. <sighs> we got the glowy hands warrior though. That's right, he did. Oh man, <laughs> that was a cool trick too. Oh, man. Um, so, uh, obviously, a lot of people coming out making statements, uh, whether it's allegations, whether it's response allegations, whether it's companies making statements uh, along the lines of uh, basically in response to uh, some of the comments or some of the allegations that were made. Uh, and then we have Twitch. Twitch makes a statement and they say... <clears throat> See, they say we take accusations of sexual harassment and misconduct extremely seriously. We are actively looking into the accounts concerning streamers affiliated with Twitch and will work with law enforcement where app applicable. We're thankful for the bravery shown by those who have come forward to speak about their experiences, and we are committed to working to make the streaming community safer for everyone. Now, uh, this one is um, this as a statement. This one is. I can read as being like, oh, so somebody can make some allegations and then you're going to delete their, par their, their, their partnered accounts or delete their Twitch account or whatever. Uh, it can read that way. But when was the last time you knew Twitch taking any kind of action? Hmm. 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 Exactly. So, uh, so yeah, they made a statement saying that they were going to do the right thing. They used the same tempo from uh, Black Lives Matter, I think. <laughs> and so they say this. Emmett Shear. Is Twitch taking action. What? What? What did you say? What did you say? Twitch makes a statement. Also, water is wet. Thank you so much. Exactly. Uh, and so, so then, uh, uh, your starling, she makes some uh, comments. She says, she's sick of being quiet. The CEO of at Twitch, Emmett Shear, uh, was asked in an all hands meeting about partners using their platforms to abuse women, specifically using my case as an example. He chuckled, said, wow, the things that go on in our platform can't really comment and moved on. This was a recorded meeting a year ago. Uh, he knew that there was an, a, par a partner abuse problem at Twitch. He was given information about partners weaponizing their platforms. He didn't follow up. He didn't address it. This is Twitch culture. Sweep the ugly stuff under the rug for profit. Uh, to all those asking for the court of the meeting, I don't have it, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, in her situation, she was dating somebody and the person was a, I guess, a Twitch partner. And that Twitch partner, after they broke up, they had a, a relationship didn't work out. So that after they broke up, I guess he started spreading uh, some uh, some previous material that she did before she changed jobs uh, through his uh, through I guess through his channel through his streams or whatever and well, obviously this was explicit content that he was sharing uh, but this was something that was brought up and I guess it was just kind of thrown under the rug just kind of swept under the rug so then then Emma Shear follows up it wasn't revenge porn because it was stuff that she had done prior prior to them dating but he brought it up i guess maybe maybe because he wasn't just you know was uh, it was vengeful i guess you could say yeah it was it was vengeful the actions that he took where he shared it with everybody and that was just never addressed um so emma sheer posts and he says there's been a lot of important conversation happening over the previous couple of days and i've heard your voices i'd like to share an email i just sent internally to the company uh on the topic and he basically goes through and says that you know he's open door he wants people to feel accepted he wants people to be, be able to speak out and all that uh and you know it's it's a lot of uh it's a lot of words <laughs> something twitch is really good at uh and he says here's actually speak a lot of the words the community has been calling for this for years and those calls have been ignored it's time for some actual action and so many many folks who previously worked for twitch started to uh you pause and think about this stuff i know paralyzer i'm sorry i know <laughs> him in his quarterly, quarterly generic post uh so yeah <laughs> quarterly generic exactly so then sampai makes a post some of you guys may be familiar with sampai um 
So she she says, these are empty words considering you as a company minimized and dismissed my sexual harassment and continued to let the predator attend your events and gave him live segments at E3 on your official channel. Now, she's referring to things that a person that who's not yet been named. OK, so we don't know who this person is, but she's saying that, you know, she she that the that Twitch is just dismissed, dismissed. Um, and then her husband, uh, Justin Wong who was the uh, previous uh, VP of, uh, what is it, relationship-owning VP? So he's a VP. He was ex-VP at Twitch, says, I was I was a VP at Twitch. I guess I could have read that part. Uh, and I reported this to the relationship-owning VP, the head of HR, and the CEO. All assured me it would be handled. Next year, he was on the same VIP space at the same Twitch event. I was told he was the VP's uncle and an important initiative launch partner. Uh, to which you know, Jack Etienne, the owner of Cloud9, even responded, said, disappointed, disappointed, but not at all surprised. Thanks for speaking out about it. Uh, but yeah, hopefully, yeah, you guys probably know Justin Wong. He's pretty out, very outspoken, very funny. I've, I've talked about his Twitter because he gives a lot of really great insight into industry stuff because he has a lot of experience with the, I mean, the birth of video game streaming, pretty much. Um, and and so, yeah, I follow his Twitter specifically for that stuff. And, you know, obviously stuff like this, he's not afraid to speak his mind, which is great. Um <clears throat> And then other folks back him up. Jack Etienne says he's not surprised. Uh, John Memes, who is an ex-VP uh, at, was he an ex-VP? I think it says here. Uh, yeah, VP partnerships with other things previously, VP of partnerships at Twitch. And he says he can 100% confirm this. Uh, so, I mean, clearly there's something going on that there's somebody there who just threw, I guess, uh just because they they have family in the group or friends or whatever, they're able to continue thriving, even though they have had allegations held against them because Twitch apparently still doesn't do anything about anything. Uh, too many acronyms in here? Is there too many? <laughs> VP, Vice President. That's what I think that's probably all you guys are. CEO. You guys know what CEO is. Uh, and then... These things get even more uh, quote retweets from people, ex-employees. As a fellow ex-employee under NDA, Justin is being incredibly brave here. I call on eShare and at Twitch to waive confidentiality for all current and former employees so we can have a frank and complete dialogue on how to fix Twitch. Which again, another one. Same thing. I support a call to waive confidentiality for current and former Twitch employees. To this day, I am sick and quite frankly haunted by my time and experiences there. They do not care about the safety or well-being of its employees or creators, period. Now, we've had stories that have come up here about uh, about some of the inner workings of Twitch and uh, their their issues with sexual harassment and various, others, uh, various other things. Uh, uh, it's very similar to Riot, as a matter of fact. Some of these stories actually get conf confused with Riot because Riot and Twitch seem to be on the same path with, the, with, the, uh, with, with some of the stuff that comes out of it in terms of like how the issues that they're dealing with internally uh the creative excuses office officer oh my god that's brilliant that's brilliant i like that creative excuses chief excuses officer that's good that's good uh so why is it why is it we're not just saying it's because the ndas people just not caring and, uh, and need to be heard it seems like oh yeah for some of them but they're also noting that i mean like what are they going to do to justin wong you know like I, he, he's probably speaking because he maybe doesn't have an nda but it is true that when you leave a company, sometimes they tell you, it's like, yeah, you, you can't talk about anything that would damage the company kind of thing. And typically, it's supposed to be uh, geared towards tech that you work on. I, I think I had to sign one when I left uh, the previous company I worked for because of the tech that we had worked on uh, while we were there. And it was, um, oh, sorry, not this before Zam. Um, and it's just so that you don't necessarily, like, you know, give away company secrets and such. Uh, and so... You know, some of those NDAs are pretty broad, and a lot of times, a lot of times, they hold these NDAs, like, you have to sign this NDA, or you're not going to get your severance, or you're not going to get something, right? So they kind of hold it over your head, like, you have to sign it. Uh, you say, yeah, I had to sign an NDA related to my work, but it was related to what we were working on at the company itself. Yeah, but I bet if you were to leave, whether you're laid off or something, you'd have to sign something saying that you wouldn't go and blab about company secrets, and it would be vague enough that it could cover any kind of harassment or toxicity or anything like that as well. And so that's why people are calling for Twitch to waive these NDAs and allow people to lift the NDAs and allow people to be able to speak. Um, and I should note, as you guys dig through that list of, uh, of accusations and everything uh, that I gave you guys, that uh, NDA, you'll see cease and desist and NDA, lift the cease and cease and desist. Just so you know, the difference is an NDA says you're not supposed to discuss thing, not discuss a thing. Uh, and the other one is cease and desist is just threatening to sue if you discuss a thing. Okay. I can't really think of another acronym for that. Cease and desist. Okay. C and D. That's it. All right. So there's no lifting of a C and D. 
Okay? You can lift an NDA to say you can speak, but a CND just says, I will sue you if you talk about this thing. But you can talk about it. So you'll see that uh, as you guys go and flip through the... Uh, uh, Flip through the survivor stories and everything. Um, Non-disclosure agreement, NDA. Well, I'm, I know that. I was trying to think of something catchy. No one knows what that means. <laughs> ah, all right. Furthermore, I mean, seriously, though, like looking at, uh, man, looking at Emmett Shear and how he's run Twitch, I feel, I strongly feel that he is out, out, out of his depth. Uh, I feel that he... Initially, he had a firm grasp of how to run Twitch. Uh, initially, he did a great job. He kept it. He kept it. Kept it. You know, hip. <laughs> he kept it uh, grounded. Uh, but the company has grown to the point where I feel like it's out of his control. And maybe not necessarily because he lacks the skill. Which that might be. And maybe he lacks the skill. But maybe that he he uh, he lacks the authority. Okay, to actually get anything done. He lacks the power to get anything done, especially maybe now under new Amazon leadership. But what I'll say is that a lot of people are calling for Emmett Shear, including myself. I feel like he doesn't really necessarily deserve to be in the position anymore because because it's outgrown him. Great. You did a great job while you were here, but it's time to leave before you become the bad guy kind of thing. Um, but the thing is, you get just because you get rid of one doesn't mean the next one's going to be any better. As you'll see in the story we're going to get to get to later. Uh, but yeah, we might get, well, I say we might get rid of, but Emma Shear might leave for whatever reason before the end of 2020 uh, or the end of 2021. Because I honestly don't feel like he's going to make it to the end of 2021 with the, at the rate things are going. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the next person that we have that comes in is going to be going to be any better. For anybody uh what they might be better at is marketing it to everybody to show that they're doing better which is a thing like i mean it's like oh we we here care about diversity we here care about uh women supporting women and believe all women and all this stuff you know they're really good at marketing that message to you but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're practicing what they preach and so we might get somebody in that maybe is just better at masking things so it's kind of like it's it's, 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 a, it's a roll of the dice the roll of the dice um Having a skill to get streaming platform off the ground doesn't necessarily make you the right person to keep it going. That's why companies change CEO all the time. That's right. Big companies always trade CEOs like sports players. It's quite common. Uh, for my corporate life, I always dread a new boss, for better or for worse. Exactly. 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 So we'll see if uh, we'll see if Sheer makes it through the end of the year. But right now, at the pace that things are going. Um, and you know, especially if we have more instances of this come up later, like I, I can't, I can't really see this really lasting. Too many things, just too many. Especially if there's a recording of that conversation where he says, "Oh man, the things that happen on our platform it kind of sweeps under the rug." Like that's pretty damning. And all it takes is one person on a conference call to record something and release it, and leak it, and that's it, done. So, ah, uh, so. <clears throat> moving on to more of the same, really. Uh, so we kind of shifted. This uh, the the Me Too thing focusing around you know sexual harassment uh, started to morph into uh, it's uh, more like toxic workspace environments uh, and it just kind of it became kind of an all encompassing thing where now people are taking the opportunity to start talking about just their general experience with being harassed maybe not sexually harassed but just harassed or being exposed to toxicity or just dickheads or bosses kind of thing uh, and. The next up was IGN. Now, this one, this was mostly occurred earlier, uh, earlier this past decade. <laughs> but uh, we did have a couple of uh, instances that came up where it says um, solidarity with my uh, with my IGN co-workers who endured emotional terror from Tal Blevins and Steve Butts. In my time from 2012 to 2016, I felt taken advantage of, exploited, and manipulated, and afraid of my job, afraid of for my job at nearly every turn. And I, I was one of the lucky ones working for them. Uh, and so he goes on to detail how working for Tal Blevins was just a, I know, what a butt. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Um, but Tal, but he goes through and he starts talking about, he goes in detail about uh, Tal Blevins and just some of the, uh, some of the absurdities of what it was what, what it was like to work with them. Now, Tal Blevins and Steve Butts were not both employed at the same time. Uh, Tal Blevins was the EIC and then, um, was it EIC, I believe? Uh, and then he ended up leaving and then Steve Butts came and took over and apparently Steve Butts was even worse 
the Tal Blevins. So it just became it just became just an ongoing thing where for a long period of time people who worked at IGN just just hated IGN. Yeah, Blevins. It's not not related to Tyler Blevins. Uh, AKA Ninja. <laughs> At least I don't think so. Actually, I, I didn't verify that information, so I don't know. I don't know. I guess allegedly not. Not the uh, not related at all. Uh, it says uh, these guys stay at a three thousand dollar Airbnbs while employees shared rooms in Roach hotels. When we pushed to have our own rooms, which I'm pretty sure they legally had to oblige, they told us to deal with it because the company didn't have the money. Bullshit. Uh, and it goes on and on and on. 2014, I was halfway through uh, my my work permit timeline, and I opened up conversation with Steve about renewing in 2016 for two years. I was uncertain if I would have a job or be allowed to stay in the country because I never got a positive answer. Steve Butts and Todd Blevins reprimanded staff for standing up for friends. They created a culture of fear amongst the best people. He talks about uh, how they, they forced an unproven claim into IGN with my name on it against my will to protect the relationship with Sony. When Sony justifiably condemned our story, Steve and Tal went silent. They, they were... Uh, they never went to bat for me for a second. And he actually has a couple of instances where he says that, um, you know, these guys have pushed onto their writers to write things a certain way and force them to put their names on it in order to fit a narrative. Uh, you know, a lot of times we shit on journalists for, for you know, basically running with a narrative and just like uh, omitting certain facts or whatever to fit whatever it is that they're trying to push. Uh, and in this instance, you know, he's going into detail here of certain situa different situations where, um, where it was pushed on by people who were in charge. Uh, so even IGN plays in like IGN. Yeah, well, exactly. No, it, it was exactly the case. Uh, this was another instance here. It says, I wasn't going to say anything because I'm afraid, but fuck it. It took me years to recover from the abuse I endured at age and IGN. Uh, I posted about this one incident, but working under Steve Butts and Tal Blevins was an unparalleled experience in being bullied and belittled. And she also goes in. Uh, and does uh, and, and goes into detail. She even says right here, when Tal was let go, I was ecstatic. I thought my life would finally get better. But then Steve became my boss and it was even worse. So this is what I'm saying with the Emmett Shear thing. You never know. You never know. Management and IGN being shitty industrial industry shills. <gasps> Who would have guessed? I know. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, so Steve regularly humiliated people like me and Chloe uh, and Eric in front of others. He tried to make me gather everyone for a morning stand-up because he knew it would make me anxious. He'd swear at me and, uh, when something was wrong. Uh, <clears throat> and it says, uh, see, da -da -da -da. it says they currently work for Level 74. Don't use them. Etc. Etc. Like, uh, there's even uh, there's another gentleman here, Eric Sapp, who was. Um, this is the only instance I found where uh, either Tal was it Tal. Actually, we'll find a second here, but where one of them and actually uh, made sexual advances towards him. This is the first first uh, instance of this. He said, "I've been seeing a handful of tweets today outing predators in the industry. I just want to say it to everyone who is sharing their stories. Thank you for being incredibly brave. My heart is racing while I type this, but I figured it's time uh, to properly reveal something. If anybody remembers the news that broke out in January 2018 involving a former EIC here at IGN for alleged workplace misconduct." Uh, he says, uh, I said, I don't want to even want to type his name because it repulses me, but you can look it up. Uh, and how he was let go after an investigation. Yes, that was me. I'm certain that we covered this, actually, maybe on this news show. It says, IGN fires editor-in-chief for alleged misconduct. And this happened back in 2018, January. Uh, and it goes into detail about some of the misconduct that occurred. And so he's saying that was me <clears throat> that happened. And he says the whole part of the Kotaka article where somebody told the reporter that someone accused him in a giant meeting, that was me. I blurted it out, uh, and the whole room fell silent. I was absolutely afraid of losing my job on the spot, but quickly after that, things were already in motion to remedy the problem. I was booked into it. Well, hold on a second. Uh, things were already in motion to remedy the problem. I was booked into a multiple HR meetings where I shared everything that he's done to me over a three-year period uh, after I publicly came out as bi, which totaled out to be 11 pages. 11 pages. So IGN had, I don't know what the current status of IGN is. In terms of, you know, obviously these gentlemen are not employed there anymore, so that's that's uh, at least that problem's out. But it doesn't necessarily mean they didn't bring in new ones. Uh, ten out of ten. <laughs> What's the Anders guy? <clears throat> um. But yeah, it's 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 clear that this industry has had a history of just shitty behavior from people shitty behavior uh, and a lot of it is I, I feel like it's just it's just older folks taking advantage taking advantage of younger folks uh by older folks i mean like people senior in companies uh people who run these uh these talent groups 
uh, you know, whatever. Like they're 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 taking advantage of folks, and this happens in esports as well. You see this a lot if you follow uh, Morrison on uh, on Twitter, or video game attorney. Uh, then you you'll see this stuff happen regularly, where you know these these young these young kids, really like 16, 17, 18 years old. You know they they try to sign up for an esports team, or they make they make the cut for an esports team, and they end up signing some super shitty contract. Uh, and it's because it's because these companies don't care. Phase the phase phase actually, which which. We've talked about being super shitty on uh, with contracts. Also happens to have uh, some allegations against them in that master list. In the master list. Now, uh, the media in industry in general has had this problem. Oh, yeah, for sure. But we should talk about it if it's in our, if it's in our industry, for sure. Uh, <clears throat> so many people worried about speaking out because they don't want to ruin their chances of making it in the industry. Exactly. Uh, I actually had a conversation with Lindsay. Um uh just what was it just a couple nights ago uh and she told me about her story and she told me who she actually went to detail uh and again like you know this is a this is a pretty detailed story that that um or, or i guess just a recollection of 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 uh of events not story um that Lindsay puts together where she talks about stuff and i won't i won't read everything here you could read it on your own but uh, she says in 2015 i met up with a big time industry guy for drinks he was in town visiting and asked if i wanted to get a drink with him after work i was stoked i was eager to network with big time folks who may help uh, may be able to help with my career plus i'm always eager to fit in and make friends it was exciting we met up in san francisco at a bar he picked i had my boyfriend drop at the time drop me off thinking it was going to be a couple hours of elbow rubbing over the course of about an hour and a half i had a lot to drink I was a big drinker at the time and was a lightweight Three cocktails maybe blackout drunk uh, after the second cocktail memory is blank uh, i don't know how he got how we got to his hotel room or even where he was staying i don't remember leaving the bar to matter how far we walked and etc etc cetera, et cetera. you can already see where this is going um and i uh, you know Lindsay told me the story and you know this is the first time me hearing about it um i mean before she she typed this up she actually was asking she was asking for opinions on how she should what she should do like should she out this person she told me who the person was and i went and looked this person up and again it was another instance of somebody who preaches believe all women all this stuff just preaching shit all the time and this person was the one who did this to Lindsay. um and you know some fucker on on twitter was like where's the proof go fuck yourself all right like i understand you may want to say that okay to maybe somebody who wants to believe somebody they've never met kind of thing right but i know i know and love Lindsay. okay she's been a good friend for a very long time there is no fucking way that she made this story up and and the person involved actually reached out because they knew that it was them and they reached out and they try they try to talk it over so so fuck you um never trust a male feminist i mean it feels that way doesn't it it's so many times where it comes out where it's just like you know i don't even want to go there but yeah no i i, I understand the sentiment <clears throat> um and so anyways yeah Lindsay details a story that happened and it's it's absolutely appalling um and the person that did it does have a uh very prestigious position at a very prestigious platform and uh which I can't talk about, but it just, yeah, it just pisses me off. Um, how do you talk it over? You should have reached out to the police. She, she, yeah, yeah, she should have reached out to the police. Well, I mean, Lindsay's going to handle it the way she wants to handle it, and this is her way of getting it off her shoulder because, and this is like how, when we discussed this, it was one of those things where it's like, if you feel better at least telling the story so that way whenever this stuff comes up, you don't feel like you have a story that you've been, hide, you've been uh, holding on to this whole time. Uh, and that's, you know, and that's how we came to the, the conclusion. Well, her, she came to the conclusion that she's going to write it up, at least get the story told. And then, and then, you know, and then, uh, see how she feels after it. <clears throat> so, um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's again, the spectrum is wide. The, the spectrum is, is broad. It's huge. It goes, like, like I said, everything from sharing a link to a porn, uh, it's I guess random porn uh, to to actual full blown rape, uh, but these allegations are everywhere and it's popping up and you know people are getting called out. People are getting called out for the bullshit and you know a lot of them are are again kicking back with uh, you know, with their own receipts showing that hey hold on a second like that's not exactly how things went down uh, and they're putting up their own. So again I highly recommend you go please and uh, and just and just just read just read it and come to your own. Come to your own conclusion. Uh, in none of these instances 
have I seen anything uh, any anything involving the police, but I have seen plenty involving lawyers. So, uh, I mean, with, uh, I believe JP, uh, maybe, well, actually, I don't know if JP consulted a lawyer, actually, I shouldn't say that. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if he did, and I would if I was JP. If I was, matter of fact, if I was anybody, uh, I would consult a lawyer first. Uh, uh, Angry Joe said he's uh, he's he's consulting a lawyer. I haven't seen follow up of him what he's said on that. But uh, K Dog says he did. All right. Well, K Dog says that he did. So I'll take K Dog's word for it. That's uh, <laughs> cool. Just uh, no, it raises red flags when you tell people that. I know Angry Joe is speaking to a lawyer. Yeah, he said he specifically said that he's speaking to a lawyer. Um, and you know, in some of these cases, I. Uh, I mean, I really hate to say it, but in some of these cases, some of these things do f seem like they're relatively unfounded. Like it was like, okay, so you guys had a really awkward date, and somebody made some un some unwanted advances uh, to whatever degree. Again, like the degrees go everywhere from he looked at me and smiled to to whatever. Uh, and but but they shouldn't. But you, we shouldn't necessarily lump them all together with like actual full blown rapists who have like half a million fucking followers on Twitter. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Angry Joe's on the list. That's someone I actually have heard of. Yeah, there's a lot of people on the list. There's a lot of people on the list, uh, and they, um, uh, and you know, there's a lot of I don't know. You know, there's a lot of I don't know. I didn't know who Say No to Rage was when it first popped up, and I was kind of like, oh, somebody else got outed. You know, fucked up, son. And that was kind of it. I thought that was it, and then it just blew up, and suddenly it's everywhere, everywhere. Um, so. There's more bullshittery though. Like, <laughs> there's more. Again, it keeps going because people see this as an opportunity to talk about, uh, to expose companies for some of the bullshit that they're doing. Yeah, IGN with the harassment and everything that was going on there. Um, you know, Twitch, you know, people calling out Twitch for some of the, for them just glossing over things and not necessarily following up with, uh, with some of the words. Oh, you said more words. Yay. I love that. But water is wet. Um, <clears throat> pretty much everyone on the list is someone that you've never heard of. I guess it's good in this case. Well, I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot of creators out there, and a lot of them are pretty. Uh, how did that happen? This shit is off. <laughs> oh yeah, that is a blackout Twitch thing. Thank you, Cube Tech. It's off. <laughs> it really is off. I'm looking at it. Um, weird. I wonder if I do have to disable it through slobs. I will look into that. Uh, so. So yeah, Q, Speaking of hashtag blackout Twitch. Yeah. So tomorrow's supposed to be uh, blackout Twitch day. Um. I am not a fan of blackout days. Uh, this happened with uh, the Black Lives Matter uh, movement, Black Lives Matter movement, where uh, they were saying, well, it was a blackout Wednesday or something like that, where they're going to basically not consume any media, not consume any whatever, not, not go out, uh, buy anything, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and a lot of times when you're building up momentum to discuss things, you don't necessarily want to just take a break. Uh, you don't want to just say, whoa, like now that the ball is rolling and people are talking about this and we might actually get things done, let's go, er, let's stop. The conversations, yeah, the conversations are more important. That's right, Ebony. The conversations are more important than, than you know, what, what are you going to do? Are you going to take a day off and then uh, come back the next day like everything's fine? Nah, just gotta, you got to keep the momentum going. Uh, if Ninja Shark come back to Twitch, Twitch will make more money off the return and they might ever lose on with a blackout day. Yeah, for reals. This, and we're going to talk about that, too. That's on here as well. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, so, no, no, do, do, do. Uh, we talked about Christina Sims recently. Uh, Christina Sims is the, uh, uh, she used to work for Blizzard. She was uh, a part of the Hearthstone team. Uh, you guys, you guys have probably seen her cosplay. She cosplayed the monk perfectly from Diablo. Like, absolutely, like, so perfect, you would think they base it off of her character. Um and I think she actually won uh, at time like 2014 or something like that. I don't remember the year, uh, but anyway, she ended up working for uh, for Blizzard for a period of time. And then last year, February, whenever that was, they did an 800 person layoff, and she was one of the ones that was laid off. Now, Christina is not somebody to go out into the dark silently kind of thing, um, and so she has been outspoken at some of the uh, on some of the uh, practices at Blizzard on Twitter, uh, and. I remember this specifically. It was referenced recently, but I remember this instance specifically because I because I follow her, and uh, she says so. So shortly after, months after Blizzard let go of a whole bunch of people, it says, "Have a love for play Hearthstone, passionate about community, wanting to work at Blizzard. If the answer is yes to the above, come join my team." And Christina responds with, "Are you fucking serious right now, Chris?" And she says, "Gonna give it to you straight. 
Job pays shit. Expectations and amount of work are too high. The entire commercial department right now is a disaster. How can you post this in good faith, honestly? You remember that tweet? Yeah, I I, I want to say we actually talked about this too because it was it was such a shock that you know just months after they let a bunch of people go, they would now all of a sudden start hiring uh, so soon. Because initially, if you remember, they cut everybody because they needed to make uh, it was right before the quarterly earnings call or something. Uh, and I maybe got my timeline screwed up here, but because there's so many layoffs, but I remember they dropped a bunch of people because they felt like it was going to hurt their bottom line or something along those lines. It was just ridiculous. But Christina is not somebody to just be like, well, OK, <laughs> she does, as the kids say, spit fire. That's right. She does. And then. So she says, I'm just going to say it because it's affecting my husband's health. This was posted yesterday. Oh, wait. Uh, today. <laughs> I don't know what time it is. Uh, she says, I'm just going to say, I'm just going to come on and say it because it's affecting my husband's mental health. Blizzard is currently blacklisting, uh, I'll just say SAV, uh, from events because I spoke out against the company and offended the CM by responding to their tweet with, are you fucking serious right now? What a joke. It says, in a call with said CM who has blocked me on Twitter, the CM stated that Sav, uh, to Sav that I would not be welcome to any Hearthstone events and would not be able to accompany him in case Sav was invited to anything in the future. Punishing me is one thing. They don't like me speaking out against what I believe is wrong. Punishing my husband just to punish me is grossly unprofessional. And then she links to the thing. Um, and then even Sav... Uh, her husband uh, responds. Let me blow this up a little bit more for you guys. Sorry, I know you guys got to get your glasses on and stuff. Says, uh, oops, that's the wrong thing. I'm going to go back. There we go. It said, this is the reason uh, that was given to me when I said I wanted to play at this event. Uh, my wife was part of the 800 layoffs and she spoke up about the unjust practices of the company. I was told I am a liability because of who I am married to. That seems so petty. That seems so petty. Now, who it is? It's for you guys. Come on. It's picture in picture. super small. Um... Yeah, it's fucked up. Is it Savitz? I'll trust Copycat. Savitz, Savitz. Uh, so yeah, it's fucked up. Like there, uh, it's like every every fucking company has got s some bullshittery going on, and this is fresh. This is this isn't like back in 2016 when I worked there kind of thing. Like this is this is fresh, uh, and it's super petty. I hope to God that this is lifted because I mean, so Sav has a decent following on YouTube. On uh, and he goes to the events, to these events to play and perform. And if he's told specifically because of those things that his wife said on Twitter that he's not, he's not going to be able to uh, uh, to participate. Uh, yeah, that's fucked up. That's super fucked up. Very fucked up. Um, hurts the feelings. Hurts the feelings. But I'm going to continue following this because I want to know if uh, I want to want to know if Blizzard's going to turn around and uh, and maybe lift that because that's some serious dirt. There's some serious pettiness to be known for. And Blizzard already has had a number of issues that have popped up over the past year and a half or so uh, that that um, that d definitely don't put them in a good light. And uh, this is just another one. This is another one. Uh, I'm really wondering how employees are holding up. Got to be a little demoralizing. I would say in some cases it probably feels that way. Uh, it probably feels like it, but I mean, yeah, I mean, some of this stuff seems pretty like, I mean, what's, what's, what's the other side of this story? Like why, if, if they had a problem with Sav, wouldn't they say, Hey Sav, you know what? We're not really a fan of the stuff you do, or maybe we're not really working with you this time, but to be told that we're not going to, we can't because your wife is a liability is, uh, I mean, I guess they get to say they didn't say that, which really is possible. Um, let's say anything's, anything's basically going to turn around. Yeah. This is, is that an issue? I uh, mean. Uh, it says he said something about uh, Hearthstone could be also why he wasn't invited. Um, see, what is it? The PR activist? I don't know. So they'll say face and say that's not true and the CM has no control over that. I love how they post the BLM stuff and then this happens. Uh, I kind of wish Blizzard would uh, just go away at this point. This must be what it feels like to be in a zombie movie and seeing your friends after they turned. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Now, now, I will say this because I am friends with somebody who works at Blizzard that I know that not everybody at Blizzard is bad, but I definitely have some contempt for some of the upper management, for sure. Uh, and it's how they run things, for sure. Uh, and this is just another example. It's like, who the fuck would do that? This seems like bullshit. Um, it's almost like corporations don't care about people. I know, but to some degree, you should at least try. You should at least fake it. You should at least fake it a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> Upper, upper mad me scumbags. Say it ain't so. Say it ain't so. Um, and so yeah. So what do we got? We got IGN. We got Twitch. We got uh, you know Blizzard. Uh, it's just like, I mean everybody's being uh, dirty laundry is being aired everywhere. Uh, and then 
And then <clears throat> we get a post about um, uh, about Mixer. Uh, this one's called Mixer, the black experience. Uh, and he says, so I've gone back and forth now to, uh, with how I want to share this information. I debate on doing a video and just letting my emotions come across raw and unfiltered. But I feel I believe the best way to share this is to write how I feel. So as I worked at Microsoft for two years, starting in 2017, in 2018, I relocated to Seattle to work on the Mixer team. I was beyond happy and anxious to have the ability to finally work in the games in, in the gaming industry. The flip side, to all this is crazy. The experience was the worst I have ever had professionally, and it's all due to racism. Uh, and so he goes on to discuss some of the some of the things that happened while he was there. He says um, he he says time goes by. We are in internal meeting discussing projects we want to execute. My manager decided to give us an analogy. That analogy was. I'm in between a rock and a hard place. What I mean is all the partners are my slaves. I own the content. I control this, their success on our platform. For me, I am the slave master. I own partners. I immediately I got angry, pissed off, and honestly, I didn't want to work for Microsoft slash Mixer anymore. My manager saw my mood and was not the same, decided to have a one-on-one. -on -one. Within that meeting, I told her why I was angry and, uh, and why uh, her using that analogy was not okay. She decided to defend her statement and even had the nerve to Google that analogy to prove it why it was okay. After Google showed her that it was never okay to use that analogy, she told me I needed to work on myself. If I wanted to go far in this industry, I needed to work on my emotions and feelings to similar comments. After this meeting, I knew that I was leaving. What's funny is I shared this with somebody, uh, with a friend in the industry, and he said that he knows both of these people. Uh, and he said that this person that he's referring to, uh, her name is uh, Natalia Domingo, uh, was a Karen Prime. <laughs> this is an absolute Karen Prime is what he said. It's absolute Karen Prime. Uh, <laughs> and so I decided to go see who who is Natalia Domingo. I decided to go and check out her social and everything, but all of her social has been deleted. Uh, her uh, oh, she's profile as well. Her her LinkedIn has been deleted. Now it's now it's uh, trying to get me to sign up. How funny! Um, but yes, social media for uh, Natalia Domingo has basically disappeared off the face of the earth. Just done. Um, and so I'm guessing she's probably going to go off the radar for a bit because her name was attached to this. Uh, but he goes on, he just talks about, he says, I spoke with the legal team to start an investigation with my manager. This investigation would continue even though I decided to terminate my employment. Months go by without a verdict. One day late last year, I get a call from the legal team with their final findings. That finding was not guilty. The reason my manager was not penalized and the reason she still has her job today is because she cannot be racist. The reason she cannot be racist is because she hired a black person. <gasps> It's kind of like, I can't be racist. I have black friends. Well, what's the, the, what's the new one? Like, my husband is black. My husband is black. Oh, my God. God, I couldn't even make it through the whole video. Jesus. Oh, uh, man, I can't be racist. I hired a black person once. <laughs> oh, man. So in that in that thread where uh where Milan Lee so uh, sorry Milan Lee I didn't say tell you guys who he was Milan Lee was a uh, biz dev for for Mixer MS so it, this wasn't uh this wasn't like a intern or something like that like he was part of the business team he was part of the professional team and he probably traveled for them uh had meetings with them regularly and stuff like that so so um it's a Karen Alpha and Omega exactly <laughs> where do we ship these kinds of people off to I know yeah seriously just blacklist them i guess um and so uh phil spencer's response to the tweet where uh millie puts out uh well it's not really my friend so i'll call him milan uh where milan puts out his uh <laughs> his experience and he says uh, phil spencer says thank you for coming forward and sharing your experience if willing uh can we connect so i can learn and understand more racism will not be tolerated on our teams or on our services he says yes sir phil let me know when also, this is what I emailed you about while working there. <laughs> so yeah, he's, he's stating that he did, in fact, reach out once and uh, to try to try to voice some concerns. Uh, so thank God his story got a lot of likes on social media. Otherwise, this probably would have got swept under the rug. Oh, man. And so, so of course, of course, people, people start threatening that they're going to leave. Uh, sure, I'll take your cookies. People start saying that they're going to leave. He says, I stream full time for a living. I will not be streaming on Mixer until something is done about what Millie bravely came forward and told us about. I urge you all to do the same. Take a stand, bond together. I love Mixer. It is my home. It is my family. But this, this is not okay. He says, your move, Mixer. I am appalled, disgusted, and ashamed right now, and I will not keep quiet. I didn't watch this video. What is this? Hey, everybody. 
All right, cool. Uh, <laughs> so Mixer, Mixer did respond, and he said, or he, uh, they said, our goal is to build a positive, welcoming, and inclusive and uh, inclusive team and community. To those sharing your stories, it's unacceptable what we did uh, that we did not provide that for you. We'll be vigilant in addressing this more directly, diligently in the future. Thank you, Milan, and the entire community. Uh, and so that was posted at twelve twenty six. 1226 uh, a.m. July 22nd, 2020. And then at uh, 1130 a.m. on the same day. <laughs> Mixer Partner Streamers and Community. Today, we've got some very big news for you. While wow, we've decided to close uh, the operations side of Mixer, we're officially partnering with Facebook Gaming. We've cordially inviting all of you guys to join. <sighs> so, hours later, it makes change. Not related to Milan's experience there. Uh, these deals take months of work. Months and months of work. I don't know if they pulled the trigger early because they wanted to kind of mass this up a little bit, right? It's kind of, oh, maybe we'll just kind of just push it until now. Um, maybe that's the case. But overall, overall, these deals take a long time to work out. So it was definitely already in process. But the timing could not have been worse slash better. I can't really decide to say it, actually. I was, was quick at the sell button. That's right. Sell. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, Mixer is indeed closing down. Uh, that was a huge shock to everybody. Huge shock to everybody. Was, we were just talking about how shitty you guys were, and all of a sudden, you guys are closing down. What is happening? Uh, and so they go on to detail, saying, bring more players into our vision. Uh, and it says, starting on July 22nd, all Mixer sites and apps will redirect users to Facebook Gaming. And after July 22nd, 2020, we'll turn off the ability to stream to Mixer from your Xbox One. Uh, and just in general, actually. That was specific to Xbox One. But Xbox One actually does not have, does not have any other... Uh, any other ways to stream unless you just unless you stream through your PC through the Twitch app. Um, so this is based this is basically Microsoft pulling out of the streaming game on their consoles entirely. Even in their write up, they say, "Yeah, you should probably use a PC to stream." <laughs> so they're just out of it completely, uh, which sucks because there are people who are just console streamers and they stream just on their uh, console through Mixer. And so now they're going to have to find some other method of doing it and maybe find other, obviously find another platform. But where are you going to go? Where are you going to go? Every platform has got their own shit right now. And so it says there's another, there's a separate blog. This blog actually goes through and it talks a little bit just about the general of what they're going to do. They're going to move everybody to Mixer. Uh, there's a link where you can, uh, uh, you can go through and you can connect your Mixer, um, uh, your Mixer account with your, uh, your Facebook account if you wanted to. Uh, was it say? Does that mean they're putting Facebook gaming on this on this Xbox? They might. Maybe the next. Maybe the next uh, Xbox will have it. We'll have some kind of presence there, of Facebook required or something like that. Always watching you or some shit. Uh, they have a separate blog where they go through and say next step for Mixer, and this is where they go through and they detail what as a as a, as a content creator what you should. Uh, you should expect, and I'll just read a couple quotes here. It says, uh, Mixer partners will be granted partner status with Facebook Gaming, and the platform will honor and match all existing partner agreements as closely as possible. Uh, viewers with outstanding Ember balances, channel subscriptions, or Mixer Pro subscriptions will receive Xbox gift card credit as a thank you for your engagement in the platform. That's actually kind of a nice thing. Um, see, I've never been to Mixer site or app or whatever. I just knew it existed. Um yeah, well, I, yesterday we went there. A lot of us, was it yesterday? I don't even know anymore. Uh, so when this news was announced, we went to yesterday. Uh, we went and checked it out. And there was a lot of people who were reading it live because it was the biggest news and everybody was reading it. So we got a lot of, it was interesting to see a lot of the impressions that people had. Uh, anger, a lot of anger, really. A lot of anger, disappointment. It was, they're, all, they're being told they're being laid off, basically. And when you spend a lot of time, when you spend so much time building up a community and then you're, let's say, banned for something that maybe seems silly, but it's like an extensive ban and you feel like, okay, well, I just lost everything I worked for. Like, that's basically what's happening here. They're basically getting banned. Um, sure, they can move to Facebook, but it's no guarantee whatsoever that anybody's going to, uh, uh, that everybody's going to move over or anybody's going to move over. There's no guarantee at all. Uh, it says... <clears throat> Mixer partners will receive double payment 
for all of their earnings in the month of June. So if you choose to subscribe, your support of channel subscriptions for Mixer Partners in the month of June will go even further. As a special thank you, any viewers with an active channel subscription on June 30th, 2020, will receive, which is in a week, uh, will receive a promotional Xbox gift card credit of $5. Uh, which will be automatically applied to the Microsoft account associated with your Mixer account. Um, I said that one guy was happy when he, when we raided him. That's right. Yeah. That why sorry, we did find that. That's right. We did find that guy who's like printing stuff. That was awesome. Um, so ooh, we were five. Guys. But I mean, the the point here is that uh, they are getting a sort of a severance package where they're going to get you know twice the amount of money uh, that they'll earn on that last check, which is I mean. It's it's a gesture, you know. They could they could I mean they could technically just be like ah no you know what get out of here, have a good one. Thank you for supporting us. Uh, what's what's kind of shitty while I was reading this article and going through and pulling quotes and everything. They detail everything here for you guys if you'd like to go through and take a look at it. But uh, I I saw this on the side. It's like happy first anniversary mixer community. Oh look at that! Yay! Oh better times, better times. Uh so. What happens to some of the big names there? Uh, so first off, the companies declined to say how much the deal was worth because remember they're 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 moving over their their uh, uh, their streaming platform, but they have a they're maintaining the rights to XCloud, which is going to be their game delivery app. So the deal is more for XCloud and to provide a home for these streamers. Sounds like Microsoft. Either Facebook wanted to absorb the Mixer community to basically kill it off, so there's one less person. Even though Facebook is like two and a half times bigger than um, uh, than Mixer, which may come as a surprise to some, <laughs> or, or maybe not, um, they wanted to kill off some competition. Microsoft is looking for a home for xCloud so they could have their game distribution surf service somewhere because if you if you think like uh, Amazon, uh, they're their own game delivery service they're doing through AWS, they're their own AWS, uh, Google has Stadia, so everybody's got their own game delivery platform except for Facebook right now. And so it seems like that's pretty much, that's what the deal is for. They're going to get one thing. Basically, everybody benefits. And Microsoft likely is going to get some kind of money out of this deal. Of course, of course. So it says the company's declined to say how much the deal is worth. Facebook spokesperson Drew Simmons noted that it is a partnership, not a merger or an acquisition. Uh, the spokesperson added that Facebook Gaming will assume the rights to the Mixer trademarks and associated domain names, but Microsoft will retain the intellectual property rights to the Mixer technology. So... Um, what state at Cloud Kappa? <laughs> when will Sony release their own streaming site? They already do. They're they're they're, they're PlayStation Network, uh, PS Plus or whatever. Like that's basically. I mean, it's not the same as like cloud gaming where you can just play the game. Uh, you just have to download it. But I mean, they've had that system in place. Can you wait? Can you do streaming yet? Well, through that, I want, did they set that up? Didn't they set that up actually? PlayStation Now. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. You meant as in, uh, yeah, sorry, no, please, PlayStation Plus, PlayStation Network, PlayStation Now. Sorry, I get them confused sometimes. Um, you say I meant streaming as in like Mixer or Twitch. Oh, streaming? Oh, uh, well, you can stream directly from your from your PlayStation to Twitch. So, yeah, you can stream to platforms directly from your PlayStation. Um, they just added the fact that you can download the titles. There you go. Yeah, Twitch, yeah, Facebook goes to Twitch. And I think other, I think other platforms too. I don't think it's exclusive to Twitch. I'm not sure. Uh, so... When you go to when you go to Mixer now, I saw a couple of here's a page that I saw. I took a screenshot of this one here. Um, but uh, like people are basically streaming. Hey, I'm on Twitch now, and you'll see this a lot when you go to Mixer. You'll see a bunch of these where people are just basically streaming. It's like, hey, I'm not gonna, I'm not living here anymore. This guy's got 510 people who are who are looking at it, and so it's smart. I would say anybody that is uh, that is looking to make the move to Twitch from Mixer, I'd probably recommend doing this. Just running this thing 24 seven. Um, and just try to get as many people as you can to move over. Uh, chat's a little interesting. What the hell's going on over there? <laughs> uh, yeah, you're probably wondering what's up with what's up with Shroud? What's up with Shroud? What's up with the uh, what's up with the uh, Ninja? And so Richard Lewis uh, says uh, sources familiar with the deal have informed me that while Facebook did try to negotiate to keep their big partners, but both uh, both Shroud and Ninja opted out, they have received their full payments and as of midnight yesterday were free to engage in talks with other platforms. Game on. And then further, Slasher says, 
These are both esports reporters, by the way. Uh, sources, Facebook offered an insane offer at almost double for the original mixer contracts of Ninja and Shroud, but Loaded slash Shroud slash Ninja, no particular order, said no and forced Mixer to buy them out. Ninja made around $30 million from Mixer and Shroud made around $10 million. Woo! <laughs> we still don't know. As far as I can remember, we still don't know how much Ninja made with the deal to move over. But remember they had the videos, like all the crazy like music videos of them walking through like fog and neon lights and everything. Um, yeah, well, I mean, that was like last year. <laughs> that was not that long ago at all. Um, oh, Lord is, oh, sorry. Lord is our magic company. Thank you so much. Uh, we do now was 30 million. Yeah, so, well, we, we, we think we know, but yeah, we, previously we didn't know how much they made, but we know that they cashed out big time on their, on their uh, departure. Uh, they did them in their homes, apparently, brought a crew and filmed it one day. That's awesome. Um, Ninja made, ha <laughs> K-Dog, thank you so much for that. At 30 million, Ninja made $92,000 a day. And then, uh, yeah, exactly, he gets, get back, gets, uh, gets control of his Twitch channel, his Twitch channel, which has been through so much. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, that Twitch channel went through a whole lot of changes. Um, now Twitch has Twitch has said that they're that they're willing to reach out to Mixer people who were previously partners and uh, and get them partnered. I don't know how much uh, you know how much they are offering in terms of a deal to come back to the platform. I don't really know. I mean, if they said no to Facebook and Mixer's gone, where else is where else are they going to go? I there's really no other place to really go. But it's possible that they'll, I mean, we know that Ninja updated his, uh, Ninja already updated his, uh, his Twitch. I didn't check Shroud to see if he did. I guess there is YouTube gaming. You're right. There is YouTube gaming. <sighs> I always forget about that. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, YouTube. Oh no, they were for the partner. They were for the partnership again. You're still following Shroud on Twitch awaiting his return. It'll be nice. It'll be nice to get, get the, get the band back together, I guess. Uh, you see, uh, they could start their own streaming service with the 30 million that Ninja got. Probably need more than that. YouTube's actually growing bigger. Oh yeah, YouTube is growing bigger. Absolutely they are. Um, I don't know what their numbers are, but they're, 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 their numbers are looking pretty good. Now, uh, Golden Boy, uh, esports commentator, Golden Boy uh, put out a tweet saying, uh, if you're a mixed streamer considering going to Twitch or YouTube and not seriously considering Facebook, then you're crazy. They've made a ton of good updates in a short time and look no further than Darkness429 to see how one can thrive on Facebook just saying. So, you know, people are saying that you can go to Facebook and I'm not going to, I'm not going to knock it. You know, maybe Facebook is great, but for me, Facebook is the home for all of my racist friends. <laughs> And I avoid that shit like the plague. God damn. So, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to necessarily go back and, you know, make that a home or anything like that. Um, is it Flow Plane? That's right. Flow Plane. Facebook doesn't have Dark Mode. Didn't they recently add Dark Mode? I thought they did. Melanie Mac hated her time there. Did she really? Uh, until they allowed me to use my screen name on Facebook Gaming, I'll never. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they did. Up, they, had, they added uh, Dark Mode recently. That's right. They did. Uh, Jesus, where are we at? Where are we at? Let me see. Well, my God, we're almost done. Can you believe it? What the hell? How much time we've we been here? Jeez. Well, in other news, <laughs> uh, well, I mean, you know, uh, Bella Delphine's back. I mean, are we still are we still good with that? I mean, Bella Delphine's back. Yeah, you got your money. She put out a music video. Can't show the video or anything like that. But, uh, you know, if you guys are running out of bathwater, uh, well, stay tuned. She has OnlyFans and it blew up because she was gone for seven months. She came back with a music video and um, she put out some some content. I actually have a picture that I want to share, but I'm not going to, even though I heavily censored it. Uh, it's a screen grab from something she posted to OnlyFans where she's sitting. I'll just describe the picture to you. Uh, where she's sitting in a bathtub full of Doritos chips. Full of Doritos chips. Uh, and there's like a Mountain Dew in the corner. And it's... Um, it's... It just feels like some boomer meme shit. Who the fuck... Come on, Mountain Dew, and I mean, unless you're talking about a certain person, who even say? Well, come on. <laughs> Next, she's gonna be doing the Numa Numa dance and shit. 
Get out of here. So, so I guess her dad is running her uh, OnlyFans now or something. Jesus Christ. Uh, but yeah, so she's back. So like I said, uh, get your uh, get your baths uh, cleaned up. Be ready. <laughs> or get your cups and straws ready. I don't fucking know. Whatever you guys do with that stuff. Gross. I admire her hustle. Yes. Yes. I will say that. Yes, I do admire her hustle. Absolutely admire her hustle. Uh, I mean, if I can make money doing the shit that she does, uh, you know I would. <laughs> in a heartbeat. Uh, 360 no scope with the bathtub shots. That's right. Bathtub's full of Slim Jims. <laughs> it's going to go way back. Way back. Uh, she'll ship out Ziploc bags of those Doritos. Probably. Probably. The first thing I noticed was how dirty your feet were in the picture. I was just like, but it was because it was covered in, in cheese dust. It's like, ugh. Like, I don't even want, I don't even want to like, I don't want to even like suck on toes, let alone have cheese dust and shit all over my toes. Give me a break. That's gross. So, so that's it. Uh, I'll go ahead and actually put the, uh, the link in, uh, in out of context. So you guys can see it there. Uh, there we go. Semi... Semi NSFW. Oh fuck it, whatever. It's not that's not not that not that not safe for work. It's pretty heavily redacted. Uh, so yeah, I'll throw it in there for you guys to see it. Um, <laughs> it's just as stupid as I described it. Trust me. Maybe even worse. Uh, sexual assault. assault uh, sexual assault stuff you covered at the start. It's also happening in the art industry with some major names getting called out. It's not limited to uh, to the gaming industry. Here's a huge name list of public apology. Noah Bradley. Let me see. Um, <clears throat> -na 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 -na. Let me find that link here. What is this? Off the cuff news. Let's take a look and see. Uh, I know that the composer for uh, the composer for uh, why is that? That's, I don't understand. Jabroni, thank you so much, Jabroni. Uh, the composer for Guild Wars Two and several other games. I can't remember off the top of my head. I can't remember his name either. Uh, but he was accused of some stuff some time some 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 time back. Uh, what is this? Along, I don't know who this person is. Let me see. Noah Bradley. Um, well, I don't know who it is, and there's no there's no information here. So it says, I was terrible to women. I prayed on them, ceaselessly hit on them. I was fucking awful. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And then, uh, and then, yeah, it says, I'm sorry, but why does it take multiple women to speak up on this behavior? Yes. I don't know. I don't know the details on this, but clearly, and, and you know, I, I, we talked about it last night, actually. Um, you know, typically when when the ball gets rolling on a, you know, Me Too movement, because this happened multiple Ooh. times, it comes in like waves. Oh, dang, Inferno. Thank you so much. <laughs> Uh, it comes in waves, and sometimes, sometimes the splashes from those waves kind of, you know, they kind of get over into another, uh, into another circle in the Venn diagram or something. This is, I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> so we can, we're going to see, we're probably going to see other industries start to pick it up and start, um, and, and start talking about, uh, you know, about this and more things are going to start coming out. You know, it's again, uh, it comes in waves and, and sometimes it kind of strikes a bit of everybody. You see, I had this very earlier when I posted it, but, uh, so I don't know as much worth noting. British wrestling and international American wrestling, uh, also had the same thing happen at the same time with speaking out. Yeah. Yeah, so it I mean it happens with every industry. It's probably because every industry is 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 uh is aging out in terms of their culture, right? Like the the folks who have been there the longest are trying to run are trying to run things the way that they uh they were brought up in the industry and that doesn't fit anymore. It just doesn't really fit anymore. Uh and so you know, uh people are calling them out on their bullshit. And that's how it works. Um <clears throat> All this week needs some Randy news to make it complete. Oh, Ira, where you at? You forgot your joke. See Madrid, thank you so much, by the way. Uh, you forgot your joke. Dang it. It's too late now, Ira. Dang it. He had a good one last night. He said, he said, maybe, maybe Twitch could get get uh, get Randy. I messed it up. I messed up the joke already. See, Ira? Fuck it up. God damn it. Fucked up. Um, so uh before I leave though, I want to say thanks to a lot of you guys. Uh a lot of you guys have been uh, sending me stuff. Send me gifts and such. Uh, and typically, I'll, I'll say thank you directly to you guys. But I want to just, just, most of you guys are here. I'll say, Raging Boner, thank you so much for hooking me up with the game Journey. Total Biscuits uh, Game of the Year 2016, I think. Uh, I've never actually played it because I'm on PlayStation. But I will. I am looking forward to going and trying it. It's a fairly short game, I heard. Uh, and good soundtrack. Um, uh, hug Shot. <laughs> I didn't think about the name. <laughs> I didn't even think about the name. I just said it. <laughs> hug Shot for Hard Space Shipbreaker, which I have an any for breakfast coming out on that. Uh, don't take what I did last week playing it. You know, I was very frustrated with the game. It was very frustrating to get the hang up. But once I sat down and calmed down and played this game late at night, then I under had a better understanding of it. So I'm very excited to show you guys any for breakfast for that one. Uh, Mad Martha for Outer Wilds. Thank you so much. Boots for Satisfactory. Crack. Cocaine the game, Sam Zorich for the room. 
Tanneros for for the room, the game, the room. Uh, uh, Tanneros for uh, sending me his old Xbox One. I appreciate that because I skipped that generation, but thank you so much. Uh, and uh, Winter, uh, Mr. Sprinkles, I should say, Mr. Sprinkles for hooking me up with this cube behind me. Do you guys see this thing? Look at this. It's a it's a party cube. It's seriously it's it's big enough and sturdy enough that you could sit on this thing. Uh, I just put it up there so that way I can remember to say thank you. Um, and, and, you know, controlled by remote. Thing's pretty dope. Thank you so much. I actually showed it to Jen, and Jen was like, uh, it's a companion. Key. Yeah, it's so great. And it's battery operated. Isn't that nuts? I mean, it's plugged in right now. But I could take that thing and, like, walk around with it and hug it and all that stuff. So, obviously, it's something I would use for, like, photo shoots as a prop or something. Uh, but it was the, this is the first, like, photography related thing that I showed Jen. And, um, and she was like, I really like that. <laughs> Uh, there we go. Slow that down a little bit. So, so, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it, chat. Thank you so much for being with me today. I appreciate you guys as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You got any link, need a link to that party cube? I got you. I'll hook you up with the link afterwards. Actually, I'll put the link in uh, in the notes as well. It's going to be an affiliate link, of course. Of course, of course. Uh, but Sprinkles, uh, it glows a lot more than expected. It's not as bright as you think. It's not as, I'm sorry. It's not as bright as you think in here. It's bright, but not too bright. I have all the lights kind of dimmed and the room blacked out. So, and sh shutter open. That way I'm not blind all day. That's why whenever I open up a, a screen that's not uh, dark mode, you see like, poof, I get blasted because the screen's so bright. Um, but yes, thank you so much for watching. TL, check the messages after. Thank you. Love you guys. Have a good one. And chat, hang out for a minute, and I'll be back. Bruh.